is your take on this whole God view thing? I mean, Uber says, look, only certain employees can see this data. It's only for well, legitimate the, the business clearest, purposes. Legitimate business purposes. So we, as we discovered 24 hours before, they included legitimate business purposes included going through my garbage and having me followed. So I, I don't have a lot of confidence in what Uber considers a legitimate business purpose. Can I, let, me, let me push back just a little bit. Did they actually go through with the plan to go through your garbage and follow your kids, or was it just merely suggested at the dinner? Um, look, I, as far as I know, they haven't, but I don't know. Okay. And, I have no way of knowing. And do you think this is something that's pervasive of Uber's company culture, or is this is a couple of employees who are out of line? I, you know what? I think it's somewhere between the two. I used to take Uber for a long time, and for a long time, you know, we've started raising questions about this company's ethics and morality since 2012, which is one of the reasons I was the one targeted. Um, and I still use the ride-sharing app up until recently because I really liked a lot of the drivers I interacted with. And I thought even though Travis Kalanick is obviously morally corrupted and has a board who will not stand up to him. I thought in spite of that they were doing some good in the world and I did really like some of the things that they were doing. Giving I mean, they say they're employing 50,000 new people right, a month. Right, right. But, but at this point, you know, we have all covered startups long enough to know that culture comes from the top and the senior executive sets a tone. And what, it, what we see over and over again, when Uber gets in these PR messes, they never fire anyone responsible. Now, what message does that send if you're at the company? I get rewarded for taking more risks that frequently involve putting women's lives in danger. This, it, it, I mean, look, look, you have young children, we all have young children. What does a three-year-old do when they are expressing bad behavior that doesn't get checked, doesn't get checked, doesn't get checked, it escalates. What's happening now is the biggest Uber scandal because none of the other stuff has ever been checked. The That's is, a culture. So you have Uber investors and, and people who haven't invested in Uber who wish that they did mm -hmm. calling Travis Kalanick you know, one of the best tech CEOs ever, comparing him to Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. I mean, you and I, I I've talked to Travis Kalanick. He's, he's very convincing. He's, he's, he's very before. passionate. Is, is, is there something wrong? with his strategy. With his I think there's always something wrong with no one questioning a founder. And what's happening right now is the board and investors are terrified of him. This is the first time in Silicon Valley, it, my time covering Silicon Valley, I have ever thought a company would be served by going public immediately. Because I think public market investors would not let one Hopefully. person have this much power and control unchecked. But unfortunately in Silicon Valley, this company has gotten so valuable so quickly and the big mega multi-billion dollar home runs are so rare that people simply are terrified. They will not do anything well, about it. Well, the thing it. is, this company already has hit a home run. I mean, they're winning the market, so you wonder why Why do they have to resort to what some people have called? Look, I, you know, it, it's... I know the plans of what was going to be done to my family. Frankly, a lot of the investors have young children. I think some of these people see Travis as this guy they don't want to cross. When he, this happened with Hewlett Packard, something similar to this, they, they were concerned about the board level, or the CEO was concerned about a leak, so one of the board members talking to somebody in the press, and so they hire private investigators to illegally pretext phone calls, get the phone records of all these reporters, a couple of whom now work at Bloomberg but didn't at the time, uh, and go through their garbage as well, hire private investigators to legally go through their garbage. But there was a criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. Do you think there needs to be an investigation based on what's happened to you, if anything's happened to you at all? I don't think uh, we're at the point of a criminal investigation yet, and I think that is solely because of Ben Smith's journalism and Ben Smith's conscience. Um, I am preparing for the fact that no one has been fired, no actions have been taken, and as soon as this dies down, they will come at me in this or a worse way. I'm convinced of it. When it comes to data, Uber is certainly not the first company to struggle with how do they handle customer data from Facebook to Google. How should they handle the data that they're getting? Very valuable. Data, you might ask. Well, you know, I think that we see, I mean, again, the, the, the examples of misogyny in this company are astounding. I mean, there's the whole glory rides thing where they were tracking um, by looking at the data patterns, who was having one night stands and, you know, fist bumping and high fiving people virtually over this. I mean, this is a company that clearly is not just looking at customer data in order to route cars more effectively. And when you talk about the sort of data they have on you, they're making assumptions of, are you sleeping with someone based on your patterns? Um, it's really quite Quite scary.
Well, in terms of the privacy, I mean, you know, you can imagine how a young company would struggle with these things. Is there a point at which we've seen this with other companies where, where privacy matters? You know, because we're in a different era now where, yeah. where mobile phones and, and, and people are getting types of data that they never could before. Does there need to be a different kind of privacy for all the companies that are in this arena? Look, I mean, this story is fascinating because it is a litmus test for Silicon Valley investors and do they have a conscience over money? It is a litmus test for journalists and will they stand up and say you cannot dismantle us and does the First Amendment matter? And it is also a litmus test for the public. You know, in the past, people have voted with their feet when it comes to Facebook or Google, when it comes to privacy. But Uber is very different because it's the real world. Well, you're, had... you're getting in people's cars. Is that finally scary enough that it changes consumer behavior? And also, Uber, unlike Facebook, there are, are other alternatives. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know about you guys, but when I take any of the ride-sharing services in San Francisco, they have two to three phones on the dash because they're driving all of these services. Well, um, I, you know, I should point out, like, as, as frightening as this is, and, and I've been through this myself in different ways from investors, not from companies, but, you know, there are journalists out there in jails in, in, in Iraq or in, in Iran. There are journalists covering ISIS who are scared to death and have faced actual death threats every yeah. day. It's on a different level. We, I think we should acknowledge that at the very least. I think that's true, but frankly, if you're a mother and um, there are threats made against your children, that's... Do you think it's hard to imagine anything really worse? really threats made against your children? Based on what I've heard and based on what I know of this company, I'm convinced about that. It's frightening stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to be a tough journalist and, and write the stories and push them out, and then and but not sort of get that involvement. But I think you know, to Ashton Kusher's comment. I mean, Ashton Kusher was saying on Twitter this morning. Emily sent that out this morning to us, and and saying, why shouldn't journalists be held to the same standard? And I think that it's not really about that. I mean, what we do, we should absolutely be held to standards. But also, what is but the same going through standard? Our, I mean, this right. is how they're trying to reframe it. They shouldn't and I think go through it's his trash very, either. very careful for us to actually hold them to what they said and not allow right. them to twist what they said. Emil Michael said, give me a taste of my own medicine. Well, to, I've never gone through these people's trash. I've never followed their kids. I've never hired, a, on a million-dollar budget, a team of opposition researchers to go at their family and destroy them. Well, let's them. be clear. They didn't, we, we're, it's not clear that they actually... No, no, but the plan was to give me a taste of my own medicine along those lines. And, and Uber, Uber spokesperson has said, we do not do this. We do not investigate then why haven't they fired This him? is not our policy. Then why haven't they fired him? If his views didn't, first of all, if, the, if what he said doesn't represent who's his views, whose views do they represent? They came out of his mouth. He's not denying that. And if, it, if they are horrified, if they found these comments inhuman, why haven't they fired him? Now, this is just one person that said this, right? Is it? Do you think this? Do Do you know that this goes beyond that? I mean, speaking of Travis, for example. Um, I, I definitely know secondhand accounts. I mean, I've not had anyone say it to me. And do and you think Travis was at this this dinner? Uh, well, Travis was. He was. Travis at the was at this dinner. But my question is, what was heard? Who heard? Yeah. What Emil Michael said, aside from Ben Smith, and, and look, I wasn't. We there. don't know. The bottom line is, we don't. I wasn't there. I know Travis very well. I think what concerns me is I also know several of the board members and investors very well, and I, I emailed them as soon as Ben Smith's story came out, and I'll name some of them: Shervin Pishavar, uh, Rob Hayes from First Round, Bill Gurley from Benchmark, and I said, I, I need to know: Do you support this company using a million dollars of your money to smear me? Not a single one has even called me back or emailed. Fascinating. It's amazing stuff. It's amazing also the lessons from Hewlett Packard, you know, because a lot of people were still around. It wasn't that long ago. It was 10 years ago. Yeah. And it's amazing that those lessons weren't learned about why that's bad. It's also interesting to me that, that these business executives don't seem to appreciate the role of journalism and why journalism yeah. makes their businesses better, right. makes their society better, helps, helps, their, com their, helps their companies honest. start to get some attention when they come up with these great ideas. Would, you know, yeah, look, I had Uber a, might be the idea of open table, but he, it's still a great he, idea. Here's right. a question. You know, Travis said executives and, and pe every, anyone can, can and should be given the opportunity to learn from their mistakes. Should any of this be forgiven? No. I mean, I, I mean, no. You have to earn forgiveness. You have to earn forgiveness. And the apology the, is I mean, have you seen, I, there's no actions. There's no act, no one has been fired. And today, you see, again, Political Strategy 101, a celebrity investor who has a higher profile than anyone coming out, calling me a shady journalist. The same thing they do when women drivers say they've been attacked in their cars. Attack my character. They are doing the same playbook they outline. I thought it was telling that in, in Travis's uh, uh, Twitter sort of uh, blast that he used the word folks, which is a word that President Obama seems to use uncomfortably as well when he's trying to seem like regular people. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of people noted that he think he apologized to me at the end.
Do you think any of this is going to matter to customers? Does this affect their business? I hope so, because I think that's frankly the only hope, because we've seen investors won't act. All right. Uh, you know, I do want to add that we did reach out to Uber and ask them uh, if they wanted to have a voice in this conversation, and they did give us those statements.